Vienna Crucis is correct to believe that co-op shooters are in dire need of a new flavor. Nearly every game that's followed in Left 4 Dead's footsteps puts four players in a forlorn zombie apocalypse and asks them to blast out an escape route before they succumb to the horde. The bleakness can get overbearing. Does teamwork really have to be so dark? The Anacrusis counters that notion with bright pastels and a pulpy Jetsons-inspired style, which delightfully strays from the orthodoxy. Unfortunately, the Anacrusis is unable to generate the crucial white-knuckle tension that makes a co-op experience memorable. In fact, after playing the three episodes available in the Anacrusis Early Access version, the only novel idea it brings to the genre is a fresh coat of paint. You and your friends embark on a slick, tangerine-hued starship adrift in psychedelic outer space. 60s sci-fi style guns and ammunition are splayed across the safe room and together you'll attempt to fend off a massive incursion of possessed, Cthulhu-headed crew members stalking the halls between you and your next checkpoint. Through security. It's not hard to understand exactly where the Anacrusis draws its chief inspiration from. Chet Falizek, co-founder of developer Stray Bombay, logged time on both Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 while he was at Valve. In this case, Falizek has said in interviews that he wants the Anacrusis to be a game that we can hang out inside of, treating it like passive entertainment akin to talking through a movie. But that philosophy has dampened the Anacrusis drama a bit. There's never a harsh punishment for death. If a party member goes down, they can quickly be revived, and barring that, they can always be summoned back from the void at full health after a short cooldown. That's not inherently a criticism, since some of the greatest co-op games of all time revel in sublime brainlessness, but here, it just becomes dull. The Horde mixes in a few special infected style villains with unique abilities into each assault to augment the constant churn, and they demand a rudimentary dose of coordination from your friends, but they rarely pose a major threat. In fact, despite the Anacrusis adaptive difficulty that scales dynamically with the party's performance, it only occasionally serves up encounters that threaten to wipe a seasoned co-op team especially because all of the basic weapons feel close to identical and you don't get nearly the same kinetic, flashy feedback you do in, say, Back for Blood when you connect with a headshot. The mob shows up, absorbs a ton of bullets, and dissipates. Everyone holds down the trigger button until victory is achieved. The lackluster environment design bears a fair amount of responsibility, too. This is such an incredible backdrop the summer of love in the dark recesses of the galaxy. It's a great idea, but this spaceship is chronically barren. In the first hour of gameplay, you'll encounter a massive serpentine shopping mall, but without any flavor text or artistic flourishes to ground us in the world, the atmosphere feels paper thin. Even as the recap screen at the end of the first episode informs you of how many thousands of aliens you killed, there's very little indication of who they were, who you are, or why you're there in the first place. While its early access launch is decidedly light on content, with just three missions that can be played through in an evening, Stray Bombay has emphasized the Anacrusis replayability as a strength. To that end, it borrows the director concept from the Left 4 Dead games. There's an unseen AI orchestrator working to alter the items and straightforward stat upgrades the party finds, as well as the size and makeup of the enemy encounters based on your party's skill levels. It's supposed to keep you on your toes, and it is true that the exact setup of the encounters deviates between each playthrough, but the gunplay is repetitive enough that a slightly different composition of aliens doesn't change the overwhelming dryness of the action. The Anacrusis' biggest problem is that after completing the first run, it doesn't inspire a strong urge to return to any of its challenges. Cooper! Ah, I'm good. Repeated playthroughs didn't do much to redeem it, and served to highlight a lot of typical early access polish issues all over this starship. 
Certain segments of the map look like they were plucked out of a game running on Unreal Engine 2 circa 2005. You might encounter a chronic stutter that infects the frame rate and the animation fidelity. The signposting within levels is laughably maddening. There are no cursory waypoints to be found, so you frequently have to rely on semi-audible voice lines announced by the party to know what to do with, say, the nuclear canister you just picked up. A lot of these oversights and bugs are to be expected in a game still in active development, and there is certainly a world where the Anacrusis irons out the kinks within a reasonable amount of time, but what are we going to be left with afterwards? A more functional and more fleshed out, but still uninspiring co-op shooter? If the Anacrusis is going to be successful as it works towards a 1.0 release date, it will have to find a more compelling spark. The Anacrusis lets you explore a plush spaceship heavily indebted to paperback sci-fi cliches. It's one of the better settings deployed in a co-op shooter, and yet the actual co-op shooting against waves of aliens suffers from a stark absence of any interesting ideas beyond the change of scenery. The gunplay is dull, the enemies never change, and the small handful of levels all meld together in the same tiresome grind. With a noticeable amount of jank sticking to the early access launch version and some weird graphical lapses, the Anacrusis becomes a difficult game to recommend at this stage. Perhaps someday the psychedelic space opera will be redefined to an extent where it can contend with the masters of the genre. But until then, it's preferable to shoot zombies back on Earth. For more, check out the first 15 minutes of the Anacrusis gameplay, plus our reviews of other co-op shooters like GTFO and Back for Blood. And for everything else, stick with IGN.